Hello guys, uh, welcome to today's session where we are going to talk about um, uh, YUM repository or GNF repository. So, you know, there is not really a difference between uh, YUM and GNF anymore, just that GNF is going to replace uh, YUM uh, either way. So last time we talked about a uh, repository and uh, system update, and we saw how YUM was powerful, right? So today um, we are going to talk about how to set up our local repository, okay? It's not a centralized one, just a local repository on the same server that is running all the time. So uh, usually we have, a server, we have a, a server that goes online and check for uh, different packages online. So today we are going to see how we can set up our own and so that the server can stay uh, in the in our uh, data center. Okay, so if you come to uh, the Red Hat uh, Red Hat page, uh, web uh, site, you will see this manual here that they have. They they talk about how to configure a uh, YUM repository, and uh, yeah, it's uh, well. I think <laughs> you see here. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really good. Right, it's very good. You you can see how to set up a repository here, and that's it. We are done. I'm pretty sure you're like, what? <laughs> are you kidding me? No, no, no. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. So <sighs> I know there are so many stuff here that you see, and you are really confused. But let's start from uh from the back okay so <clears throat> according to what they say here they say the configuration for yum and related utilities uh is located at the slash etc i'm not going uh, i'm not going with the definition because we already uh, talk about the definition already of yum repository and i think here they're going to talk about it again so they say this file contains one mandatory, so this file here contains one mandatory uh, main section, which allows you to set YUM options that have global effect, okay? They have global effect. And can also contain one or more repository sections, can, all right which allows you to set repository specific options. However, it is recommended to define individual repository in new or existing dot repo file in the slash etc slash yum dot repos dot d directory. So here is the recommended uh, place where we have to configure our YUM repository. The value find, the value defined, excuse me, in individual repository section in the YUM, in the slash etc YUM uh, dot conf file override value set in the main section. So I'm pretty sure you're like, what is that repository? So, uh, uh, if you don't understand what is it, let me show you that in a pictographical way, okay? So, <clears throat> let me slide this guy here. So here, you can see that uh, we, have, we have a schema here, okay? So um, let me go through it and explain. As a system admin, usually what you do is that you have your uh, maybe a rare repository, a uh, rare server, right? So let me put that here for example, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, okay? So you have your Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 here, for example, you can have 7, 6 or whatever. It might be also Rocky Linux, CentOS. So you have, you have that server and you want to perform some action using the yum command or the gnf command that you see here okay so when you perform that action you might have to type uh, a, a command
man like yum install dash y yum utils okay so when you type that command this is to install a package that is called yum dash utils and if you are lucky you have set up a a, um, a firewall okay you have set up a firewall and properly you have properly set up a firewall what it will do, it will go on the internet somewhere in the world that you don't even know where it is going. And then it will, <clears throat> it will jump on a server somewhere in a data center located. I, I think you kind of getting what I'm saying. So it will get in a data center and then collect all the dot RPM packages. Okay, so this server has all the, so let's say you were, asking for yum yum dash utils. We are going to assume that that yum dash utils is like this, okay? Yum dash utils, for example, uh, dash one dot zero. No, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, dash one dot zero dot 23, something like that, okay? And then EL8, and uh, how do they write that? It's something like, uh, mm -hmm. and then we have, let me, I think it's dash here, no dot, mm -hmm. something like that. And then we have uh, x86 underscore 64. So let's say it's this package, right? So here's the package. And now what comes after that package is the name, okay? That yum look after this is just an example it's not the actual version here please don't be don't be confused on that so that's not the actual version okay so we have a package for example and we want that package to be installed on this server to perform some action some local administration stuff okay so as a system administrator you type the command yum install dash utils, okay? So now if you have set up a firewall, that firewall will protect you against the, uh, the internet malicious hacker, okay? And then it will go, 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 and then take this package that you are not even sure the, what that package is, okay? And then it will, from this repository somewhere, so those repositories are there to accomplish their task. And then you will transit here, okay? Go through that firewall again, and then come through your server and get into your server, all right? So if someone wanna attack you, you will do that. For example, if you didn't set up the firewall properly, okay? Because you cannot master all the stuff that you have to install your firewall to protect you and they might uh, take some advantage out of that. So the same thing goes with YUM update, for example, YUM update, upgrade, YUM info, YUM whatever, because YUM likes to go online, unlike RPM, okay? So RPM, like we said, is the, RPM is the back, is the back end, okay? It's considered as a database for YUM because RPM install packages that are already on the server that has been downloaded already. But YUM, what it does is it goes online, it looks, it look after, uh, it looks for a server somewhere in the world and then grab the package that you want and then come here and install it. Next time when you want to run it, you have it, okay? Same goes with YUM. So this is a perfect, picture if you have a firewall. But if you don't have, or you forgot to set up something, what happened? You have been hacked, right? You have been hacked by, by someone in the world. So this is why we need to set up a, a repository, okay? So as you can see here, they say we have to go into this repository somewhere here and then set up all that. Now, to set up that, right, you have some values that you have to put into a specific file, okay? 
has some value that you have to put into a specific file. And that file has to have a dot repo at the end, okay? It has to have a dot repo at the end. And basically, this is how that file looks like, okay? So you have the name of the repository here. So it's gonna be called repository ID. And then here is the, so here is the repository ID, I mean, and then here is the name of your repository, okay? And here is the URL from where that repository is sitting, okay? You have to tell Yom where it will go and grab that. So as you can see here, now that URL can be based out of, 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 um, of an HTTP server that you have and you have uh, collected all those packages or uh, there and put that into a specific location into your Apache server, okay? Most company, they are doing that. And it can also go to uh, with a, uh, FTP that we saw, okay? We saw the very secure uh, file uh, transfer protocol daemon that was used to, to transfer files, okay? So it can be used for that. And if you are doing that uh, without, I mean, if you are uh, copying all your uh, packages, you are done, you are dot repo, you are dot RPM packages, okay, into a file, you have to specify the name like this, file, okay, and then you put, you put colon, you put triple slash, okay, triple slash, just, just say here that here, it was two slash, two slash as well. And I think you can also do that through NFS as well, okay? You can also do that through NFS. All right, so that's that's a little bit what we, we need to do. And uh, we have another field that is called enable, okay? Into that file as well. You have to put the, the value enable. So if you put zero, Okay, the, the, the repository is gonna be, um, it's gonna be disabled, okay? If you put one, it's gonna be enabled. So as you can see here, all right? You can also use the command. You can also do that through the command, okay? Dash dash disable or dash dash enable, all right? And uh, here is how that, part, that um, for example, here is a, here is a sample of that, okay? Here is a sample of that. So as you can see this sample, as you can see this sample here, we have a Red Hat server that has Red Hat repo file, okay? And here is what it has. So here is the repository ID, okay? Here is the name. You see that the name can have space, but the repository has to have like dash. If you want to put space there, you have to replace the space by dash, okay? And uh, it is between square bracket, please. You have to notice that between square bracket, okay? And then here is the name of the repository that is going to be displayed on your when you will type your command. And here's the base you are, you see here, they are using an HTTPS, okay? And then you see that enable, meaning that the repository will be used by your system. So if it's zero like this, it means that that repository will not be used by your system. And repository are there to give you extra stuff that you don't have on your server that YUM cannot install by default, okay? Now the GPG, GPG check here, I'm pretty sure you are asking, what is that, okay? So this GPG check is like a key. It's like a key that enables your server to check all the packages to make sure that they are compliant, okay? So, and if you have that key, I say if you have, because you, you are not the one who created a repository. So if you have that key, you may, you may place that here, okay, and tell, uh, yum that hey go into this location okay and after three slash go here and check for that key and the rest here are just like uh, SSL stuff that you you might you might want to set up okay I think now 
you are you already good right now let's go to practice because talking is good but now practice is another stuff so for our practice i have installed a new server okay so if you see here this server has 25 gig of uh 25 gig of um disk space okay it has 25 gig of disk space so what i'm going to do is um let me go to the server and i will show you what i'm what i mean and i did this with a red hat server but you can do that with rocky linux or centos or whatever that you you know out there that is related to to red hat okay so here i'm going to show you what i mean you see that i have internet access here right let me ping google for example dot 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 google.com okay so as you can see i'm able to ping google and uh, rara is the perfect example to explain this thing right now on your rocky linux is going to go through because they enable that but we rather you have to do some extra stuff in order for you to have access to install packages so if i try to install uh, let me connect as a root user first because you have to do that as a root user or if you are set up a, a, a an administrator on your system you can do that okay i'm going to put the password here and i have my server okay so if i type host name you will see that i gave the name local server repo okay now if i do yum yum uh, yum update for example, what happened? You see what it says? It says that I need to subscribe the server and I don't have any repository available. If I try to type yum install yum dash utils, for example, no way. No way. There's no way for me. If I try to type, so this yum dash you choose, you are going to use it. You, you are going to install it on this server. If I try yum dash config dash manager, okay? So here's a guide that you are going to use to do that. You see that it say command not found, okay? So that's the that's problem that we have. So our server in this case is not able to install packages, is not able to update itself, is not able to do nothing. So you might think like, uh, I don't, I cannot use this server. Luckily for us, we can do our local repository. Okay, so we can do our local repository, and for that, we have to attach our ISO image. Okay, that we downloaded, uh, that we downloaded from the internet. Maybe you are Rocky Linux in your, in your case, if you are using Rocky Linux or CentOS. In my case, I'm using Red Hat, okay? Because if I do cat slash uh, etc os, os dash release, okay? You will see that I'm using a Red Hat server here, okay? I'm using a Red Hat server here, 8.5. All right, that name is very complicated. <laughs> All right, so, so I said I have to attach my my uh, my uh, DVD, right? My ISO image. So to see if the ISO image is already mounted, I do this and I don't see anything related to an ISO image. And if I do LS block to see all my uh, my block. You see that I have nothing here, okay? You can do that with a dash P so that we see everything. So it's supposed to be here, right? And it's supposed to be here. That's the, the name. That's, this is the path where all the CDs goes. So all the CD goes. So now you can see that my, my disk size is here, 25 gig, okay? And for that, something that I forgot is that you have to make sure that you have enough space into the slash directory 
okay because if i do this gf minus th again you should see that i have 20 22 percent being used okay for the slash and my my iso image is 10 point uh i don't know if it's 55 or 80 something you will see that you see here i have 17 so it means that i'm good to go so if it's not the case please install a new server okay all right now let me attach my so i'm coming here um targeting my rel since i'm using a rel server i'm going to do that with rel if you are using rocky do that with rocky okay so i'm doing that with rel it's 10.22 my mistake so now you see that it has been attached right because they say here rel a5 base os underscore it, uh, something so it means that it has been mounted successfully okay it has been mounted successfully so now if i do gf minus th again you should see that i have something that has been mounted into slash run slash media slash us user for this is my username and then and in this path okay and you see that it says iso this is the file system type iso 9660 and it's 11 gig okay that's weird we saw 10.22 <laughs> why is it 11 gig here okay and here is where from where it is coming right so if you do lsblk dash p you should see that here as well now it has been mounted and we see 10.22 this thing is definitely where okay so now we are good to have our repository okay but how do we proceed to do that we have a cd and <laughs> we don't even know what is it so um i'm going to show you something So here is that CD, okay? Here is that ISO image. We have two type of files. Right? We have two directories here that we need to have in place, okay? And we are going to make a copy of those two directories. So we have the upstream and we have the base OS. So the upstream is related to all the application, extra application that you might want to install on your server, like for example, uh, Apache, Apache Engine Next, um, all the stuff, okay. For example, um, Ansible that you want to install. Uh, this one here, it's specifically re uh, attached to the OS, to the to the kernel related stuff, to the uh, operating system, okay. Not the the kernel, the operating system. So this one enables your operating system to perform actions, okay that you can benefit of and uh, this one here it's related to yeah it enables your server to uh, accomplish some extra stuff but it is not they are not specific to the operating system at that point okay so let me go to the upstream first when i double click on that okay i have repo data here and i have packages let me go to packages Wow, see how it is loading. So it means that we have a lot of stuff there. And boom, voila. So if you look here, let me type this and then come to properties. So as you can see, we have something that is specific to database. And then we had a .rpm here. You remember when I was talking about that thing, right? It's a module and it's a dot rpm package okay so it's an rpm package so meaning that we can we can make some installation of those of those stuff here okay let me look for apache for example http httpd so you see we have httpd here okay so you see what I'm, I was talking about. So it is coming. Now, that's good, right? That's good. And now let's go back to, uh oh 
that we have made a mistake somewhere. Now let's come to this repo data. So the repo data you see here has a specific file as is very important. And it's this file here, okay? This file that you see here. So this file has, this file that you see has all, it has all the, the instruction for your, for your CD to look into specific uh, location, okay? Yeah, so as you can see here, it has a, I mean, this is a an XML file. Uh, it's very complicated, right? But it has all the instruction for your, uh, your, your, for your key, not your key, but for your repository to function properly. So we need, so we need all these two. And for that, we are going to copy this directory somewhere on our server. And after we are done, we are going to copy this one as well, the base OS, okay? The base OS. And in this base OS, for example, the yum dash utils should be somewhere here, okay? All right, so it's there. So this is the one that we need, but we are not able to install it right now, okay? So that's what we are going to do. The same you can go to, uh, for the same, you can go to this. Uh, so when you do df minus th, you can go to this location, okay? Like we did from, from there, you can go to this location. Uh oh, sorry. You can go to this location and then you type cd, you paste that there, okay? So you paste that here. And uh, when you type enter, you are inside the DVD and whatever you were seeing there, here it is, okay? So we can go to upstream and do ls. We have those packages and we type cd to packages, okay? And if we do ls, you see that we have all of them, they are RPM, 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 RPM even the one in base OS is the same, okay? So I'm going to create two directory for those base OS, for that base OS and that upstream, okay? So you can call that whatever you want, the, the name of the directory that you are going to create. So let me create that on the slash, okay? So I'm going to type xdir, and then I will just put the same name, okay? App and then stream. And I want to create as well base OS, okay? Uh, base OS. I think I, I'm forgetting something, the slash to say I'm going to create that on the, the slash directory, okay? All right, so let's go to slash and make sure they are there. Now, if I do this, okay, you can see if I do ls minus rtr, you can see that they are, they are here, right? Base OS and apps stream and upstream. Now it's time for us to collect all the, the files and directories to to this location from that CD, okay? Now, let me move, let me um, uh, copy, okay? For that, we are going to copy. And I think we can use the, um, which command can we use? We can use async, we can use a lot of stuff, but I'm going to make it simple, okay? I'm just going to type copy dash, dash um dash a r v okay the r is just to say a recursive and a is to say all all whatever is inside that directory copy that okay and i'm going to say copy uh oh uh what am i what am i doing yeah copy all from where from slash 
uh, I mean, let me paste that from here, right? And what is the location after that? We have upstream, right? So here we call that upstream. And then paste where? Where do we want to paste? So I'm going to put star here, okay? To say everything that is on the upstream. So star, and then I'm going to paste that into my upstream directory that I just created. Don't be confused. This is the one that I created, okay? So now the V is to say recursive, okay? Now I'm going to type enter. Now it's going to take some time to copy all those stuff. So I'm going to pause on the recording while it is doing that, okay? And once it is done, we are going to resume with the, I'm going to resume with the, uh, with the recording and then do for the BSOS as well, okay? So see you in, in a few minutes. Okay, guys, it seems to be working perfectly so far. You must copy everything, all right? So you can see even that uh, repo, repo MD, all right? It has copied that, okay? So let's verify that it has been copied to that location. So if I do uh, our ls minus LTR again, so you will see that we have this, okay? And uh, let me go to this directory. That's the one where we copy everything. So if I do ls minus l on upstream, okay, should show me the content that it has copied. Okay, so you see that it has copied effectively. Now, uh, if I do the same on base OS, since we didn't copy anything there yet, you we see that we have nothing there. Let's check on our on our size, okay? The this size. So you see this? You see what I was talking about? We were at seventeen, right? You see that it has eaten something like uh, uh, six point six more something. No, I mean seven point something, right? You see that it has eaten something. Now we have we are left with only 8.7. Okay, so we are already at 60% of usage. Now we have to copy the base OS as well. So to copy the base OS, I'm just going to change the, the name here. Okay. So I'm going to put base OS here. This is the location where we want it to go. Okay. And uh, sorry, here as well. I have to change it to base OS. And then I will hit enter, but this one is going to go pretty fast, okay? The other one was taking a, a, a lot of time because they are, they are just a list of application and all those stuff. And this one is kernel and OS related stuff, okay? So it doesn't require a lot of, of packages. In a few, in a few seconds, we are going to have everything ready for us to, to use. All right, it's good, all right? That's good. All right, let's check on our memory again, on our disk size, I mean, again. Yep, you see that we have, we are eating something like 60% already, and we are here at 7.4 gig and we have been using so far 15 gig okay out of those uh, 22 that we have here all right so now i think we can get rid of our of our iso image but if you are if your iso image is not mounted properly uh, you can call me and then we are going to troubleshoot that okay so now what I'm going to do is just get a uh, rate of that disk. I can do that on my own, okay? I can unmount it manually, or I can do U-mount, okay? That's the command to U-mount it. U-mount uh, what? So I don't wanna give this whole path here. So you see that it is mounted here, right? So you can U-mount that. 
here or here. So this is the command to do it. So I'm going to do slash dev slash SRO, SR0, I mean, and then hit enter. And it has been on mount, it has been unmounted. So if I do GM minus TH again, you shouldn't see that anymore. If I do LSBLK dash P, shouldn't see it anymore. Okay. I mean, it's still here, but it is not mounted. Okay. It's still there, as you can see. But if you want to completely uh, get rid of it, you can go to your virtual box and then remove it from your system. Okay. Now it has been has been removed completely. Now if you do that again here, you shouldn't see. I don't know why it's still showing that. Uh, I think this is like a cache. Okay, it's like a cache. All right, so we have our, um, we have our, oh, okay. Uh, we have our base OS that has been copied as well. Okay, nice. Now, they say that the repository should be located into the slash etc slash yum dot repos dot d, right? Let's go and see what is there. See the, since I'm already on the slash, if I type pwd, I'm already on the slash, so I'm going to go to etc slash etc slash yum dot repo dot g. Okay, now I'm going to do ls here. And I see that I have a red rat repo. What is inside that red rat repo? And here is what is inside. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, right? It didn't put anything there. So, uh, yeah. So we have to, we have to, uh, to do our own red rat repository. Okay. So for that, I'm going to type this command, yum, uh, yum, dash, config, dash, manager. Uh oh, I, I typed the wrong thing. Dash manager, space, dash, dash, add, dash, repo. I can do that manually, but I want to do it this way, okay? And then file. Hold on, since we put it into a file, okay, I put file and then I give the, the, the location, which is upstream, okay? So basically I'm telling, um, I'm telling my system that I wanna add a new repository. And if I hit enter, it says yum-config-manager not found, command not found. So we are having a problem here. We can do that manually, okay? Go into that file and add line after line. But I wanna show you how to do that automatically. For example, if you are doing the YUM, the, the uh, certification, because at some point they're going to ask you to do this. So, but over there, you don't have to install anything. Like you just have to configure this, okay? And then type this command. Just have to type this command, but in our case, we are going to go into uh, this directory, okay? See to slash uh, is the base OS. Yep, it's a package that is inside the base OS and inside packages, okay? And uh, if I do ls and then grab for grab for what yum dash utils. I should see that here, okay? Now, what is the command that enables us to install packages when they are already on our system? Yes. Yeah, RPM, right? Because it is ending by a dot RPM here. So I'm going to do the uh, RPM dash and the command syntax, we type HIV or VIPIH or whatever, or IHE. So I'm going to type this, and then I'm going to copy this whole line here, okay? Because 
you have to give the you have to give the full name okay you have you have to give the full name for that okay for that you have to give the full name so now if you if you give the name partially it's not going to work so i'm going to type this and it is it has been installed successfully okay you can see that here so nice now let's hit that command again uh, you don't have to do this okay but i'm just um Oh, sorry. I'm just, uh, I just want to show you what will happen. Okay. We can type, we can type uh, uh, CD to slash etc. We can type CD to slash etc slash, uh, slash, oh, sorry, slash yum dot repo. And we do this, right? So if we hit this command again, this command, and we type this, you see that now it is not saying anymore something that blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now it says that, it says what here? Adding repo from this path. Okay. Adding repo from that path. All right. So now we have it working properly okay we have that one that has been added you see let's go inside that file so vim into upstream and here is what we were talking about right now i'm going to customize that a little bit and i'm going to call it i'm going to call it uh upstream uh you Unix, okay, Unix Cloud. I'm going to call that upstream Unix Cloud training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to call that like that. And here the name, I'm going to tell him, hey, I don't want this name. So I'm going to say, um, uh, upstream upstream repo repository created by by yum or slash dnf okay and here i'm going to leave the file like that and enable Okay, so if you if we put zero here, the that this repository is not going to be used by our, by our system. Okay. There is another line, if you remember, we are GPG check at the exam, please put GPG check equals to zero. This thing made me fail my first exam. So we are going to leave this one like this. We can make a copy of this, okay, and put to the uh, and put into a new file to have our the other repository but i'm going to hit the same command again but this time around i'm going to change this and put base os okay you can put them into the same file there's no problem just put space and then you have whatever you want okay now if i do this you see that i have two i have two more right with dot repo uh, if i if i go into that one as well i have to change it yep base os underscore uh if i put uh you unix cloud trainings okay here is what i have now you see here they say this command are uh, created by GNF config manager. So it's, it, it's not that, okay? It's not that. Okay, so you are going to say uh, base OS, 
I mean, you can put whatever you want there. It's not, it doesn't have to be the same. I'm just choosing like that. So base OS created by, by what? By yum slash, yum uh, slash DNF, right? Yep. And if you put zero, that one is not going to be used. So now if I do a GPG check equal to zero, okay? If you put one, it's going to require for a signature, like it will pull somewhere and say, please confirm this, okay? You're going to require a signature for your, for your package to be installed. Now, can we install our packages? Before installing our packages, usually you have to type something, okay? A specific command like yum or DNF. I say whatever you can use them interchangeably. So DNF, um, clean all, okay? So this will clean any cache that was there before, okay? And then you can just, uh, you can just now type GNF or YUM repolis. And boom, see? See that, you know what? I don't like this. When I type like this, I don't want this message to appear all the time. It's like, yeah, they are forcing me to do something. So I'm going to change that, okay? I'm going to do CD dot dot. And then I'm going to go to, uh, to a specific directory, uh, CD to yum. Mm -hmm. CD to yum. And then if I do LS, I have this. And I'm going to go to the plugin.conf cg to login.conf and if i do ls mm -hmm, i have this and i have something there called uh, subscription manager so let me catch that guy and see what is inside okay i have this thing so i'm going to type zero there okay so let me go inside of that subscribe manager and then see if that will solve the problem so i type this and then so they say here when the following is set to zero so this one is set to one then all the define outside result will be disabled okay so now let's try that again okay let's try our command again yum repolis Oh, nice. Now I don't have that message again anymore. So you see here, here's the repo ID that I was talking about. And here's the repo name. Okay. So the repo ID is upstream Unis Cloud trainings and then upstream repository created by this. This is what we put, right? And here is what we, we put. So now let's try to install a package, for example. Um, Let's try to type yum update. You remember that we were we were not able to do that. Yum update. Is it gonna do that? Wow. Nice. Nice guy. Nice. You see, it's working. And do we need internet to do that? Let me check. So I'm going to remove my internet connection. I'm going to turn it off and then come here, do yum, install HTTPD. What is it going to do? Oh, it is installing. So you see that yum is not, is not going to internet anymore, right? Meaning that we have a secure repository where we trust that this repository is what we, is what we set up and is coming from our is coming from our own repository. You see that this one, it is using the upstream here, right? And to install this package that you see, it is using the base OS repository. 
So now it's good and I think you are fine. So head over to the exercise that I gave last time and uh, try to solve that, try to see how you can couple the FTP, okay? And the, and the, 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 and the YAM repository to have a centralized server, not on the internet like this one, okay? Not on the internet like this one, because this one is on internet, okay? It's somewhere on internet and we want to have the same configuration. So what we did, let me uh, make a recapitulation, okay? So what we did was to set up our own repository. Now our server doesn't have to go online anymore. And you saw that I cut the, the internet, the internet connectivity, it was still able to install packages, okay? So that's why we say Linux is really powerful. He can run, you can run without internet, okay? So we were able to configure our, DN, our YUM or DNF repository and make our server stay into our uh, corporate environment and install packages from there. So what I want you to do now is to have a centralized repository. When we say centralized, it means what? It means that we have a server, okay, in the same company, that will serve that purpose of having packages like that, okay? And then that server will, will, will give access to other server to come to, to, uh, to it and grab all those packages just like this. But here we are going through internet. So I want you to do that with FTP, okay? And then <laughs> try to, to, to have that and do that with another server and see if that server will be able to go to, to the centralized server and grab all those repository. So good luck on that one. We were able to, uh, to talk about YUM repository and I think we are fine, okay? So see you next time.